Austin Joe head to Mexico to pick up a prize bull, even though the Ponderosa already has its blow the woods, an issue that won't be resolved until season five. After the Virginia City stock footage is shown again, we see Ben at the bank withdrawing $15,000. Just outside, the Cartwrights gather in the back alley to do some shady business. They're buying a bull with a long name. Scandalous. In all seriousness, I'm glad they're keeping the money thing on the down low this time, because they're getting a bit of a reputation for... And two guys hear about the money Hoss and Joe are carrying and follow them. I swear, those kids can't buy a soda pop without being robbed. On the bright side, I'm sure Joe will share this wisdom of a learned experience someday with older brother Adam. Maybe sometime when they go on a trip, just the two of them, to sell some cattle. Maybe over a cold beer, he'll inform Adam on the benefits of not loudly stating the large sum of money you're carrying. So Ben says that they should purchase El Rojo Grande, etc., for 10 or go up to 15,000 if they need to. The 20 was, I assume, so they'd have spending money in Mexico. Don't want them to get into any trouble, right, right Pa? When talking about the trip during their overnight campout, Joe makes a reference to a girl who they met in Virginia City once and that now they're going where they grow them. Not sure I like that line. But before I get a chance to really dwell, those two men from before show up and act like one of them is hurt. Joe holds a gun on them while Haas is being rather trusting. You know, sometimes I'm thankful for Joe's unwillingness to give the benefit of the doubt. Uh, no. Dad, burn it. He put the gun down. The men proclaim that they'll kill Haas without the money, and Joe uses a pretty neat trick that I don't recall if they ever use again. He has a gun hidden in the sack. Haas hits the other man. Both are dead, and Haas has obvious remorse for it. They bury the would-be robbers without mentioning the law. Back to that, are we? The trip is off to a wonderful start. Actually, when you've watched this show long enough, you realize that this isn't that out of the ordinary. At the home of the family they are buying the bull from, two women are standing on, the ba on a balcony. The older says that the dogs are doing their strange people bark. This one made me smile, and if you've ever had a dog, you know how true it is. The younger woman notices Joe right away. Like any good Joe gal, she's already thinking of marrying him before he even sees her. The older woman reminds her that she's engaged. Her response to this is to put on a white dress to meet the men doing business with her father. Haas and Joe meet the entire family they're buying from, as well as the neighbor who is engaged to the daughter. The group partakes in a discussion about the correct way to say Haas's name, where Haas says for the first and only time that his birth name is Eric. The others don't have a problem calling Joe Joseph, but can't seem to say Haas, so Joe explains that his name is El Caballo, thereafter being called that until the end of the episode. Don Xavier is jovial and welcoming to his guests. Meanwhile, Eduardo is already eyeing Joe suspiciously. My theory is that Cayetana probably flirts with young, attractive men all the time, and Eduardo is intimidated. Not everything can be about bull or the bull, right? Either way, he spews some casual prejudice against what they call Yankees. Only not to Joe's face, or we might have a problem, ask Adam. And Joe tries to wave off his defensiveness and do what he came to do. At the same time, it is Joe, so he's even more interested in Cayetana now since her intended treated him that way. We will see this in future episodes, too. Joe might not have given your girl a second thought, but you had to go start in something with him. Before Cayetana even came down the stairs, he was insulting the Cartwrights about the price they were paying for the bull. The line that cued her arrival was when Joe said that if Eduardo ever had anything Joe wants, he'd be glad to deal with him. Put a pin in that. We see a little boy lurking while the exchange is taking place, and he runs to tell his parents that the bull has been sold. It's obvious right away, with very few lines, that this family works for the Lazaros, and that they all care for the bull, El Rojo Grande, or Big Red. No, 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 not, not that Big Red. That's next season. Little boy's father, Valiente Lopez, says he will pray that the bull is not sold. 
The boy, Epiphanio, suggests praying to a more well-known saint than the patron saint of impossible things, St. Jude. Epiphanio suggests St. Francis, who loves all animals. Valiente agrees to do both. We already see how positive and happy he is even when given bad news. When we first meet him, he's strumming a guitar and singing. And he'll do that a lot this episode. Epiphanio visits with his best friend and reassures him that he's not going to let him be taken away. The next we see is him keeping that promise, because when Don Xavier brings the Cartwrights to see the bull, the pen is empty. Don Xavier knows enough to ask Valiente and his wife where the bull is. The father pleasantly points out that wherever the boy is, so too is the bull. A search is conducted. Joe gives Haas the slip to go to an old shack where he seems to have the idea to be alone with Gaetana, and she has the same idea. Well, mostly the same idea. The strange thing is that when we cut to them alone in the cabin, Joe acts very much the way he did when Ada seemed to flirt with him in Magnificent Ada. Cayetana is coming on way too strong and is already talking about marriage. She forces Joe into a kiss and accuses him of compromising her. He seems to go back and forth, being into it after the kiss happens, but he's definitely out after she brings up leaving her intended for him. He didn't come here for a commitment. Epiphanio is having some trouble of his own when a storm blows out his campfire and a black bear smells El Rojo. Haas comes by in time to save them in a scene which is hard for me to watch, honestly. Haas's only weapon is his bear, pardon the pun, I'm trying to make myself feel better here, hands. Afterwards, he seems to feel the same amount of remorse he had for accidentally killing the would-be robber and posits that the bear can't be blamed for being hungry. There's a lot that can be said for situations like that in our current world. Wild animals are driven out of their habitats and closer to us humans. There are consequences to that. Being that they love the land and nature of the Ponderosa so much, it makes sense that Haas would be the one to deliver such a message. This also further states for us that Haas has a gentle heart. Haas sets Epifanio straight in his misconception that the Cartwrights want to eat El Rojo. Poor kid. Don Xavier makes a comment to his worried wife about how he pities anyone messing with his daughter with such pride that it makes me smile. Back at the love shack, Joe makes the cardinal mistake of telling a woman who is attracted to him that he loves her like a sister. She gives him a nice whack for his trouble. The others find them, and the two act like nothing happened even when Eduardo finds pieces of straw in her hair. The next day, the sun is shining and El Rojo doesn't want to leave. Joe, on the other hand, wants to have left yesterday. Epifanio leads El Rojo into his special pen that Haas paid extra for and stays in there with him. Haas is shocked when they're followed by Epifanio's parents. Um, did you think you were keeping their son in another country, sir? He resists the idea of their coming along until Epifanio's mother is said to be a good cook. I guess that's about as good as an excuse as you can find. She's given a chance to prove it that night when they make camp. They go so far as to prepare a plate for El Rojo. Or so it seems. Turns out there's another stowaway of the girl variety who swears Epifanio to secrecy. They kind of seem to have a brother-sister relationship, and I can imagine why if Epifanio's parents have worked for hers for a long time. They probably grew up together. Haas brings the bull a cup of coffee. Yeah, I'm serious. And then he sees her there. The way she explains things to him, Haas gets the impression that Cayetana is pregnant with Joe's baby. Uh, Haas, honey, could you come here for just a second? Thanks. So, um, how long were you staying with these people? When did you think this happened? If you think they made Baby Cartwright in that shack, that wasn't nearly long enough for her to know she's pregnant. I know this show sometimes doesn't fully explain how long has passed between scenes, but good grief! He almost gleefully allows Cayetana to confront Joe. Joe denies anything beyond the kiss, and the others show up promptly. Eduardo, though not hearing the pregnancy rumors, thankfully, challenges Joe to a fight all the same. He lets Joe pick the weapons, and Joe gives him the choice. Lucky for Joe, his opponent chooses something Joe knows very well. Rapiers. 
I like the continuity here of Joe happy to fence because it's in his blood, but he doesn't get a chance to use it often. Joe is all too happy to agree, going so far as to continue the fight when he could have won. He wins anyway, but the fight could have been a lot shorter. They bring fists into it a couple of times, which I would think is cheating. Even though Joe won and this makes Cayetano want him even more, he gently tells her that Eduardo loves her and when he does meet a girl that he wants to marry, he would like to be the one to do the asking. In this current time frame, I would think that's fair. But put a pin in that too. Like, a big pin. You know what? Just stick a sewing needle in that big boy. The Losario family go back home, and the Lopez family join Haas, Joe, and El Rojo all the way to the Ponderosa. Just when you think the episode is about over, they sneak an Indian attack in there. A chief and some braves from a tribe they don't specify want to steal the bull for food. Epifanio pleads to die in the bull's place. The chief is so moved that he smiles to his brave, and instead of cutting the boy's throat, cuts both of their hands in a blood brother ritual. By the time the others come, the issue is resolved. Finally, they get back to the Ponderosa where Ben and Adam are taken aback as Haas tells them the family will be staying with them for a while. An indeterminate while since we never see them again. And they never even mention Hop Singh. Normally they would be worried about how he would feel about something like that. Hmm. The boys fill Adam in and he doesn't believe a word of it. Either that or he's just mad he missed out. I had the same occurrence in making this video that I tend to have with others, which is that I like an episode more when having to write a script for it than I did in prior viewings. I don't generally watch this one much, but I might now because I find it to be a lot of fun. One small detail which doesn't amount to much in plot, but that I thought was cute, was when Epifanio's father was teaching Joe to play guitar, and it almost sounds like Joe's badly playing Jingle Bells. My only point against this episode is that there are a few moments which seem to, albeit probably unintentionally, play into stereotypes. Like how they portray the Indians reminded me a little bit of Enter Mark Twain, although not nearly as egregious. The overly helpful and friendly servant felt like a stereotype too, but I could just be reading too far into that one. Let me know in the comments what you think. Kayatana is a bit too ditzy and it stops being cute by the time they leave her family's place. Probably my favorite part of the episode was Epifanio and El Rojo's relationship. I wanted Haas to just tell Epifanio that he could keep the bull himself, but I know they paid a lot of money for him. Even if they can't make up their mind how much money. I hope they gave the kid the first calf that El Rojo sired at least. I hope you enjoyed the video. I tried something new and sprinkled foreshadowing references to future videos, including one that is coming up in August that I'm really excited for and I don't recall seeing anybody else doing. So stick around for that. Leave me a comment and subscribe to stay in the loop.